Hey, hey, everybody, it's Eddie from Tokyo. This is your cryptocurrency update from Japan. Yeah, I'm going to move fast today because I've got a lot to cover. Um, first up, I want you to take a look at Kitao san's um, tweet. He just tweeted this a few hours ago. I know um, this is probably news you've ever seen, but hang in there with me. I want to look a little bit closer at this company, Currencies Direct. So Ripple targets the e-commerce sector implementing XRP to speed up Amazon currency conversions. So Kitao-san, of course, is the CEO of SBI Holdings, and he is what has uh, he's the man behind the new launch with XRP in pairing with the yen on the new VC Trade website. So uh, if you don't follow him, um, maybe you're not a, a Twitter person, but if you do follow him, you will see, oh, my gosh, he tweets more than Trump. He's just an absolute retweeter. I mean, it seems like something every hour on the hour comes from him. So this is a retweet that he did today. And um, let's take a look. You know, he's going to be at the Tokyo blockchain event next Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh, he's the keynote speaker. I'm so looking forward to that. And I really hope I get a chance to, um, gosh, speak with him. Yeah, that's actually my hope. Well, we'll see if, what I can do. So in that story, uh, which I know um, it's June 4th, so please don't say, Eddie, 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 this is an old article. It's old, but let's just take a look at something here. UK currency conversion company Currencies Direct have recently announced a successful trial and implementation of Ripple's X Rapid platform. Really great, right? Currencies Direct specializes in reducing fees involved in a currency conversion in the e-commerce world. They look at mim minimizing fees by providing cheaper exchange rates for online retailers than they receive as standard from e-marketplaces such as Amazon. Okay, it sounds really great. Let's take a look, though. Who who is this? Uh, who is this company? Well, uh, on their website, actually, this is this is actually a comparison website. So, Direct Currencies, uh, it was established in 1996, and they offer 63 different currencies, um, and do have a minimum transfer amount of 100. What is it? 100 euros. So, it's a very low amount. Um, they uh, have an online platform. They work by email or by telephone. They have offices in the UK, France, Spain, Portugal, India, China, South Africa, and the USA. The interesting thing is this company has a no fees worldwide policy. Wow. So I am um, thinking they must be very, very popular. What I really wanted to find here. Here are the pros and cons. So the pros are, this is what I was really seeking. They have over 150,000 active accounts. So they have some um, corporate accounts as well as some private individual accounts. And they have this no fees ever policy. So I thought, this has got to be great. They have a very high rating, actually. Um, 95.2, and then you can take a look at the rating breakdown. But I am just really pleased to know that a, this company, which I think has a, a great potential to grow, is um, so happy with their trial. They do have a very um, well done three minute video on their website. I'll put the link in the comment section and you can have a look because we're going to move on. We're moving fast today. All right. This is the SBI trading website that um, just is in its trial with, um, you know, it launched on the 4th with uh, pairing the yen to XRP. And it is the VC trade, which is being branded as today. It has the BTC Bitcoin and BCH Bitcoin Cash currencies added. So those virtual coins now can be traded on this website. 
And I am um, wanting to take you down to a little bit of the detail here where they talk about the risks. So this is um, this is just kind of interesting. The first risk here is the um, kachi hendo. Kachi hendo uh, risk is value fluctuation. So um, yeah, and then you have saiba uh, attack, which is the um, second risk that they cite. The third risk down here is the liquidity risk. And then after liquidity, we have a no settlement risk. And then we have the hard fork risk. And then the last risk noted is the 51% kogeki risk, which is the 51% attack risk. So I find it interesting that BTC and BCH were both listed together on the same day. Now, I, I know there's a lot of infighting in the community between the two, but in Japan, that infighting is not so prevalent. I mean, I think people just are not as emotional or crazy to take sides like they are in other parts of the world. But I do find it interesting that... Um, the site decided to put both of them on at the same time. Yeah, okay. And moving on. I received on the comment section, somebody asked me, hey, Eddie, have you ever seen an official document regarding the decision by the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission on BTC and um, Ethereum? And I said to myself, no, actually, I, I didn't ever see like an official document. So, you know, so often when we read the news, you might read a, uh, a news from Cointelegraph, which then cites Reuters, which then cites Bloomberg. And, you know, I'm just using that as a hypothetical example. But, you know, sometimes these news stories are citing other news stories and you don't actually see the um, source. So I wanted to go to the website and this is um, on the 14th of June. This is the speech. This is under the um, speech section of William Hinman. And this is the actual document in which he makes those remarks at the Yahoo Finance All uh, Market Summit Crypto. And uh, you can take a look for yourself because I think that it's always important to read with your own eyes the um, source document for what people are talking about. Okay, yeah, I'm on Coin Market Cap. I wanted to take us there because we are able to see a little bit of green, and that makes us all happy. Bitcoin is up 3.7%, Ethereum up 3.9%, and Ripple is up 1.8%. There's some modest gains, but hey, green is green. And I wanted to point out that they are now using the new Ripple logo. Yahoo! When I take you to my favorite crypto compare, as you know, I always like to see the BTC volume by currency. Uh, Bitcoin is usually the, um, in terms of uh, being transact transacted in yen, it's usually by far the runaway winner in the worldwide transactions with about 53 to 57%. But if you look at today, wow, 62.4% of all transactions are done in yen today. So there is a lot of trading going on with Bitcoin in Japan. Okay, we have an interesting article from the uh, Singapore Asia World paper. It's a talks about rich people become cryptocurrency fans and they want better advice so the survey says and this is interesting because it hit home for me um, I have a very good friend who is in banking and he works at Tokyo Star Bank here in Japan 
he says that more and more of his high wealth clients and even just um, individual retail clients are coming in and asking how can they work with the bank and get into trading and saving uh, cryptocurrency. So his bank is actually providing now some official training so that they are well equipped to be able to communicate to their customers what their options are. And I don't doubt there's going to be some movement uh, it within these um, smaller banks to be able to provide those services to their high wealth individuals. So it goes on to say that only around a half a million millionaires are in tune with their wealth managers and the very rich are increasingly interested in cryptocurrency investments a survey released on Tuesday. So this is very new information, just came out a couple of hours ago. And I think that when you read um, the breakdown and how many people uh, are actually in the space, it shows that there is still a huge opportunity to bring other investors, which is going to have a direct relationship to the size of the market cap. Okay, that's my point. Oh boy, so we've got another one of those negative Nellies out there. Uh, Hyun Song Shin just released today his annual economic report and he talks about cryptocurrencies looking beyond the hype. I don't want to give this guy even more than 30 seconds uh, because of course, I don't agree with him at all. He cites some really ridiculous um, examples in his video, which talks about the uh, crypto kitties and also how the um, the rate of completion on a transaction for BTC was so high at $57 in December, but he doesn't take into account that that issue has been addressed and we've got um, some solutions on the way. So, you know, I, I just find that he is another example of someone who is just entrenched into a world that is really resistant to change. Here is his bio and I, I will just give you a little bit of background on him so you can um, be aware of who this guy is. So he took the position of the economic advisor and head of research at BIS back in May of 2014. And before joining BIS, Mr. Shin was the Hughes Rogers Professor of Economics at Princeton University. In 2010, on leave from Princeton, he served as a senior advisor to the Korean president, taking a leading role in formulating financial stability policy in Korea developing the agenda for the G20 during Korea's presidency. So from 2000 and 2005, he was a professor of finance at the London School of Economics, and he holds a doctorate in philosophy, which is the same equivalent as a PhD. It is something that Oxford gives out uh, in uh, and a master's of philosophy at the economics of Oxford University and a BA in philosophy, politics, and economics from the same university. So gosh darn, he has an amazing background. But that doesn't mean that I have to agree with him or that I think he is um, good for the space. But I am going to show you that here in his 24-page document, which we're not going to go into because I'm moving fast today, he does cite some of really, in my opinion, weak arguments as to whether or not the cryptocurrency space is valid. So I will put it in the comment section, but I'm absolutely positive you're going to see this article come up a lot in the next few days. Okay, this is something from Japan, and you need to pay attention because, as you know, the FSA the Financial Service Agency, which is the watchdog over the cryptocurrency exchanges here in Japan, really has some, uh, it has a, it's like a poster child for the world in many ways in terms of regulation. So no one uh, 
No one price law for Bitcoin, Japan's FSA debates restrictions on leverage. So this is all about arbitrage. And I think that the FSA is concerned about the differences in price from the exchanges <coughs> because people are are able to um, move that money around and take advantage of the differences. So when we take a look at the members of the working group on financial markets, I went to the FSA website and I can find a current list of actually who is on this task force um, as of December 22nd, 2016. I can't find anything a little any more current, but what I can tell you is that it's really chock full of some of the brightest minds in Japan. And I will put that link into the comment section because I think it's important to see who's behind making these um, um, advising the FSA because I think if the FSA adopts uh, some sort of no arbitrage opportunity, I think then it has a rippling effect across the world with other exchanges. When we look at a simple example of arbitrage considering the following, the stock of company X is trading at 520 on the New York Stock Exchange, while at the same moment it's trading for $20.05 on the uh, London Stock Exchange. So a trader can buy the stock on the New York Stock Exchange and immediately sell the same shares on the LSE, earning a profit of five cents per share. So the trader could continue to exploit this arbitrage until the specialist on the NYC run out of inventory of company X's stock or, or until the specialist on the NYSE or LSE adjust their prices to wipe out the opportunity. So I was trying to imagine, well, okay, if the FSA is going to react uh, in controlling the arbitrage opportunities, um, how do they do that? So I understand now they actually will work with the exchanges to adjust the prices so that they can wipe out the opportunity. Now, the, the question is they can can they do that in Japan? Yes, but can they actually enforce that outside the country? I don't think so, unless there is absolutely worldwide cooperation. So that's the million dollar question. Okay, if you remember, uh, I wanted to, gosh, I want to talk about uh, wording. Let me just take you back to the SBI website. So we talked about the risk and we talked about um, this uh, Kogai, which is the attack. Okay, 51% attack. Okay, this kanji right here, Kojai. Okay, now we're getting into the fluff. So bye-bye to all you people who don't want to listen to the fluff. But I want to talk about this fluff. So Kogai, which means... Oh gosh, we gotta, I'll, I'll just leave it. It's a little large for me. Okay, so this is um, Kogeki. I'm sorry, not Kogai, Kogeki. So Kogeki is to beat, attack, defeat, or conquer. And you can see this is the kanji. And it's really a beautiful kanji. It's complex. It has um, three radicals to it. This, this one here is wheel, or also used currently in modern times for car. This here is hand, which in um, ancient times could mean like the master. So you have a you have the hand, which is you are the master. And then this radical here is uh, a pike or weapon. So the, the kanji, which originates from China, here it is kogeki to attack is you have the master weapon that's on wheels. So it's always 
dates back to some ancient, ancient uh, meaning. Now, look at this. Is this not beautiful? This is kogeki. This is kogeki in a very stylized calligraphy form, which we call shodo. And this is a site that you can buy the high resolution images. So here for just basically 3000 US dollars, you can buy this image in a 21 by 29.2 centimeter size. And so if you would like to have some artwork or you want to use it for maybe silk screening onto a shirt or, you know, I think um, the licensing um, of these uh, images are available and you can then purchase the high resolution image and usually if you do a personal use you don't have to pay any extra than the download fee if you do these images for the purpose of resale then sometimes site by site by site there are some different pricing but if you just want some individual personal use here you go um, if you're not interested in such a uh, large size you can go down to the smaller size for just about 15 US dollars and it's 12 centimeters by 16 centimeters, almost 17 centimeters. Yeah, so I just wanted to share with you how this kanji, when it's done in a very stylistic shodo brush and ink style, can be just absolutely beautiful. So I happen to love the look of that kanji. All right, and last but not least, this is the actual area in Osaka where they found the fault. It, that earthquake yesterday was due to a fault, um, not a plate. You know, there's two types of earthquakes, ones that occur at a fault and one that uh, occur when you have two plates crashing together. The one out by Fukushima in March 2011, though that was caused by plates. But this is, um, yesterday's earthquake was caused by a fault. And there are many, many faults that run through the region. They don't know exactly which fault this is. And the thing, the, the problem with these types of earthquakes is because there's so many faults that run together, they don't know with the aftershock where it will, um, uh, move again in relationship to another neighboring fault. So um, when they have these types of earthquakes, usually the aftershocks occur in a, a slightly different area. Okay, everybody, so we still wish the best for Osaka. They are in the process of a big cleanup. There was a lot of property damage, and um, I just, my thoughts and prayers are with everybody there. Okay, yeah. Oh, we got through everything and did it in one take. Thank you so much, everybody. Sayonara for now. Bye-bye.